Hey guys, Levelcap here and welcome to another episode of This Week in Gaming. Today we're taking a look at Ubisoft's new Battle Royale FPS, a big update for Hell Let Loose, Warzone leaks, and much more. If you haven't already, subscribe and turn on notifications to catch the next week's episode. Ubisoft pulled a riot this week and revealed their PC Battle Royale game Hyperspace via select Twitch streams, which had Twitch drops enabled in order to get access to the game. At its peak, Hyperscape had over 450,000 people tuning in. Riot was actually the first developer to utilize Twitch drops like this, and that campaign was also massively successful. As for the game itself, Hyperscape is an urban combat battle royale that blends Unreal Tournament and Tribes Ascend with the likes of Radical Heights and Titanfall. As the name implies, it's a hyperactive game with players constantly jumping hundreds of feet into the air. Much of the combat takes place on the game's rooftops, with players using the various slam and teleport abilities to extend their jump and movement ranges. The weapons are your typical assault rifles, sniper rifles, grenade launchers, and rocket launchers. Every player can have two guns and two abilities. How you synergize those abilities is going to be essential, but it is obvious that the slam ability is pretty much required. It gives you a massive vertical leap. Without slam, getting away from enemies or on the rooftops is way more difficult as is keeping up with your teammates. Of course, as with any new game, it will be some time before its meta is established and balanced out and all the weapons and abilities are sorted out. One of Hyperscape's more interesting mechanics is the ability to run around as a ghost when you get killed. Getting revived requires you to interact with another dead player's marker. This gives your teammates the ability to revive you. Now, one of the other major reveal gimmicks is that Twitch viewers can make random events happen during a match. These are limited to things like low gravity, infinite ammo, enemy reveals, and even a few others. And if there's no viewers for a match, the game's AI will pick random events during the course of the match. Overall, my first impressions of Hyperscape is that it still needs some work. It seems like a solid game, but the TTK seems to be all over the place, and the ability meta so far seems to just be heal, slam, and well, nothing else. Hopefully some weapons balance tweaks, new abilities are all in the works. And if you're looking to try Hyperscape out, well, you're gonna have to watch some select Twitch streamers to get a chance at a drop in order to get access to the game. You can also register your Uplay account for an opportunity to get in. As for other platforms, so far Ubisoft haven't said much about their console support. It seems likely that the game will make its way to every platform under the sun if it is genuinely Ubisoft's big push into the new genre. For now, it's limited to just PC. Servers for the current technical test of the game close on the 8th. Earlier this week, we covered new info about Hell Let Loose's next major update. Update 7 will add the Urban City Carrington as a new map. More significantly, however, it's a total rework of the game's animation system. Until now, we haven't had a good look at the upcoming changes, but the devs released a sneak peek at the changes in a 24-minute video showcasing all the first-person perspective improvements. The Cliff Notes version is that all of the movement animations have been overhauled to be more fluid and natural. All of the animation states like crouching, firing, sprinting, and vaulting now blend together pretty much seamlessly. The character model's hands have been retextured to be more photorealistic, and the weapons have all been reworked to enable new effects. In a future update, weapons will get bloody, muddy, or covered in snow based on the situation. MMGs have been reworked from the ground up with a new bipod system that lets you manually deploy the bipod either when standing near cover or when just standing in the open. Obviously, deploying it on cover will give you a much more accurate sustained fire. But the unbraced fire, both from the hip and ADS, has been given way more recoil. You'll pretty much need to brace the weapon to get manageable sustained fire. The game's audio system has also been reworked. It's no longer tied to your FPS, so even if the frame rate dips, the audio won't cut out or sound weird. Weapon sound effects will also change based on the environment, so they'll sound different when you're in the building versus when you're standing in the woods. There's a ton more to talk about with this update, so stay tuned for coverage of it soon. The addition of Carrington is pretty major, but these animation improvements will also have a massive impact on the actual gameplay. I'd go so far as to say that this is the game's most significant update yet. 
Hopefully some performance improvements are also in the works. The sneak peek video does look a bit choppy due to an issue with the recording. The game itself was supposedly running at 120 FPS. If true, that would be a massive improvement in how the game currently runs. Crisis Remastered had a gameplay trailer set to debut this week, but the reaction to a leaked version of the trailer has prompted Crytek to postpone the big reveal. Most of the criticism toward that trailer was that it basically just looked the same, if not worse, than the original game. Crisis is legendary for melting even modern PCs. It was designed from the ground up to be as future-proof as possible, but a critical error in Crytek's prediction of future hardware has essentially kneecapped the game's performance on every high-end modern PC. The hope with a remaster is that it would be optimized for modern hardware and remove the bottlenecks that tank the FPS. Unfortunately, it seems like Crytek did that without modernizing the game in any other way. The leaked trailer says the game has been rebuilt with the new CryEngine features and tech, but it's tough to see any improvements aside from just the raw performance. To be fair, it's called Crisis Remastered, not Remade. However, there's a lot of remasters these days that go above and beyond. And while I think it'd be nice to get a version of the original game that looks as good or better than Crisis 3, I think a lot of people would settle for it running well and sporting some better graphical effects. Regardless, Crytek have pushed the remaster's release date and full reveal back a few weeks to refine the end product further. It's unclear whether this is going to bring big improvements to the game or not, especially considering, well, it's only a few weeks. It's time to buy yourself a new hard drive because Call of Duty Modern Warfare has finally crossed the threshold of 200 gigabytes for an install. A full install of the game now requires 209 gigabytes on PC. Players are generally pretty unhappy with the average size of the game's updates. Pretty much every download for the game is several gigabytes. Infinity Ward have said that they're trying to optimize the game as much as possible to reduce file sizes, but the total install size has only gotten bigger over time. As for the future of Modern Warfare, leaks and rumors suggest some big changes are in the works for Season 5. It drops in August and is rumored to further build on the reveal of this year's Call of Duty game. Right now, it's expected that the Black Ops Cold War will be the 2020 COD game and that Warzone will carry over support to the new game in some way. Cold War will reportedly have its own campaign, multiplayer, and zombie mode, but there have been several Easter eggs hinting at a Cold War conflict found in Warzone and Modern Warfare standard multiplayer maps. Season 5 is apparently bringing some significant changes to the Warzone map. An official screenshot recently showed some changes to the stadium area, and it looks like players will finally get access to the building's interior. A report is also suggesting that a moving train will be added with Season 5 that players can interact with. Frank Wood, a character from the Black Ops franchise, also has some voice lines buried in Modern Warfare's mid-season update that were data mined. All things considered, it looks like Activision are massively ramping up content for Warzone while also further teasing Black Ops Cold War. Season 4 didn't bring a whole lot to the table in terms of new content. Hopefully, Season 5 will finally bring some major changes to the Warzone map. A gameplay trailer for the PC release of Horizon Zero Dawn was released, showcasing its improved visuals, features, and options. The main improvement is an uncapped frame rate. Even on the PlayStation 4 Pro, Horizon is locked at 30 FPS. Being able to run the game at 60 FPS or higher will be a huge improvement as much of the game revolves around shooting specific parts of the game's mechanized wildlife. Other improvements include interactive foliage, enhanced reflections, a benchmarking tool, and full graphics settings controls. The PC version also bundles all of the game's DLC in one package. It launches on August 7th. Death Stranding's PC port is also in the news this week as it will support DLSS 2.0. This is Nvidia's AI-driven upscaling technology that lets you run games at lower resolutions like 720p or 1080p and output them at what looks like nearly native 2K or 4K. Obviously, it's not truly native 4K gameplay, but in motion, it's pretty much indistinguishable. The benefits are that you get much better performance, so more FPS, less stuttering, etc. The bad news is that you'll need an NVIDIA GPU that supports DLSS. 
That said, Kojima Studio is known for putting in the extra effort to optimize their games. Metal Gear Solid 5 might have been on a different engine, but it ran like a dream on both consoles and PC. Death Stranding shouldn't be any different considering it runs quite well on the PlayStation 4 Pro, which is pretty equivalent to a low mid-tier range PC. It's also running on the same engine as Horizon Zero Dawn, so pixel peepers like Digital Foundry will probably have a field day examining each game's different implementations of the same tech on PC. The next Far Cry game might feature a familiar villain. Breaking Bad's Giancarlo Esposito has allegedly provided his voice and likeness for Far Cry 6. It's unclear if he'll be a central character or just make a cameo appearance. But one thing is for sure, whatever role he plays, I'm sure he's going to bring an incredible performance to it. His cold and calculated performance as Gus on Breaking Bad went down as one of the best bad guys ever on TV. So it's exciting to hear that he might potentially be the villain in a franchise that's known for having great villains. Michael Mando, who plays the franchise's most notable bad guy Voss in Far Cry 3, also plays a feature role in Breaking Bad spin-off Better Call Saul. In our final story this week, the online fighting game tournament Evo Online has been cancelled following allegations that its co-founder, Joey Quayer, assaulted a minor. The assault allegation comes with sexual undertones and paints Quayer as a pedophile and predator. He acknowledged the accusations on Twitter with a brief statement, but has since been removed from his position at Evo. It's unclear if he will face charges. Aside from the allegations, the major concern is that Quayer's conduct has been reported several times by players, only for it to fall on deaf ears. The wave of allegations rippling through the gaming community over the past few weeks has really shaken the foundations of some major corporations. It'll be interesting to see how the game community responds in the long run. And that wraps it up for today's episode of This Week in Gaming. As always guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.